वेलकम बैक टू माई क्लास रूम दिस इज जस्ट इन टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सो डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम इज वन ऑफ द वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग कॉन्सेप्ट इन इन्फ्रेंशियल स्टैटिस्टिक सो वट इज डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम इन इन सिंपल टर्म्स डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम इंडिकेट फ्रीडम टू वेरी हाउ मेनी ऑब्जर्वेशन हैज फ्रीडम टू वेरी और अदरवाइज वी कैन सी हाउ मेनी इंडिपेंडेंट ऑब्जर्वेशन आर देर इन आर डेटा फ्रॉम विच और पैरामीटर्स आर कैलकुलेटेड और मीन वेरिएंट्स बेसिकली वेरिएंट्स आर कैलकुलेटेड सो बेसिकली इट इज हाउ मेनी इंडिपेंडेंट ऑब्जर्वेशन दैट इज सैंपल साइज बेसिकली राइट एन एन इज अ सैंपल साइज एंड व्हाट इफ आई हैव माइनस वन नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन ऑन व्हिच आई हैव कैलकुलेटेड माय पैरामीटर्स लेट अस से वेरिएंट्स सो दिस इज अ डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सो टू डिमोन्स्ट्रेट दिस आई एम गोइंग टू टेक एन एग्जांपल व्हाट इफ आई हैव 10 चॉकलेट्स विद मी and i'm going to distribute gift uh, this chocolates to my students who um, answer the questions very correctly so i went to the classroom and i asked a question and um, assume that the first question was good answer um, the answer to the first question was really good so i gave the person around uh, five chocolates and second person okay kind of answer i gave uh, the second person three chocolates and the third person gave me best super excellent answer so how many chocolates i can give i can give only two chocolates because i have just 10 cho- uh, chocolates here so i could vary this five and this three in my own way whichever i felt it is appropriate i gave that but when it came to the last one uh, the i didn't have much freedom to choose so that if i take out the freedom of one particular observation i have a freedom to vary these values this is a quantity specific observable can it quantity what if this is just a value i need to get a value of 10 and for that um, instead of chocolate um, i can vary uh, two observation in any way let us say minus uh, 20 and uh, let us say um, plus 10 and and uh, what if you take another um, to get a total score of 10 i need to take another um yeah minus uh, plus 20 if you add that you will get a 10 so whatever may be these two values you can adjust the last value so that the end product will be the same see that so take out the freedom of one observation and other values can vary in its own way this is called as degree of freedom how many observations can be varied in this way in the entire data set so this is a simple demonstration to uh, understand what is the concept of degree of freedom so originally we don't work with the sum here generally when let us say the common inferential statistics let us say t test um how, from where this degree of freedom come in that context it's basically variance most of the statistical analysis inferential statistical analysis are based on the concept of variance so uh, let us say the equation of variance is um variance equal to um, sigma x minus x bar whole square divided by n minus 1 so that this n minus 1 this is a degree of freedom of the variance and we generally consider this as a degree of freedom uh, for the particular test um if you take the square root of it it will become a standard deviation of a data uh, the usual equation of it so that uh, when you when you calculate uh, when you try to make any inference from a data that generally that is based on a sample right from the sample you make inferences um and you make conclusion about the population so when you calculate a variance for a Uh, sample uh, this is our equation and we take n minus 1 we take out the freedom of one particular uh, observation that means if my total sample size is 30 if i take out freedom of one particular observation i have 29 independent observation is that independent observation based on which the entire data is uh, calculated so this is the uh, concept of degree of freedom so always it is n minus 1 always it is n minus 1 you know sometimes you will find different kind of values for example let us say when you calculate uh, independent sample data you have uh, group 1 um, male group and female group and um, what is the degree of freedom for this so for example take this group you will get n minus 1 that means variance of first group and the second group you will get n minus 1 so together n1 plus this is n1 and this is n2 as you like that okay n1 plus n2 minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 like this i'm sorry 
n minus 1 n minus 1 and this is n1 plus n2 is total n n minus 2 this is a degree of freedom so fundamentally this is uh, n minus 1 so you have two values here you get a degree of freedom 2 in this context mm, what about when you do um, ANOVA so what's the degree of freedom in that context so there are different kind of degree of freedom when you talk about ANOVA right the common first one is between group uh, variance so when you what is the between group variance that means I have a group 1 group 2 and group 3 and I have means for this data that is let us say 53 49 and 52 so how many observations I have three observations okay so this the variance between these three observations are between group variance so what is the degree of freedom 3 minus 1 so 2 is the degree of freedom between group uh, degree of freedom generally in ANOVA table summary of ANOVA table we called as C minus 1 that is number of columns or number of groups minus 1 so it's basically n minus 1 itself okay what about within group uh, degree of freedom in the case of ANOVA so I have group 1 instead of the total score I am taking the original values here just for example I am taking uh, 5 7 9 2 like that or 3 8 9 5 um, 1 3 8 9 some values okay ignore these values now these are the values in group 1 these are the values in group 2 these are the values in group 3 so what is a within group variance uh, according to ANOVA we'll talk in detail uh, about ANOVA between group and within group variance for the sake of explaining the degree of freedom I'm using this example okay now um, this is a, a within group variance equal to a variance of the first group first group plus variance of second group plus variance of the third group very within variance of each group this is a with total within group uh, variance so how do you do this so uh, what's the variance here and what's the degree of freedom here it's n minus 1 n minus 1 and n minus 1 so I'll write like uh, n1 sorry n1 n2 n3 just to differentiate three groups okay n1 minus 1 plus n2 minus 1 plus n3 minus 1 so what is that so I have n1 plus n2 plus n3 minus 3 so what is this the total sample size so n minus what is 3 here number of groups I have three groups here I get 3 what if I, I have four groups I'll get four ones so uh, it will be four so it is basically number of groups so this is how we calculate uh, the uh, degree of freedom for within group variance so what about total total variance so total sample size n minus 1 this is the total degree of freedom so degree of freedom is basically the number of observations minus 1 most often and um, when you consider the um, uh, correlation so correlation is basically um, variance of uh, variable 1 variable 2 the product of it and divide by uh, basically um, product of x y divided by significant x and y like this so I have two set of data this is one set of data of x and another set of data y this is correlation right so uh, I, I have a uh, n minus 1 here and I have an n minus 1 here so basically it is this both n are same so you get n minus 2 this n here and this n is same individual itself and you have two values to from where your values has to be subtracted so you'll get n minus 2 so n minus 2 is a degree of freedom of uh, correlation so it's always uh, it's n minus 1 what about chi-square analysis in the chi-square analysis you have a number of uh, row that is one variable number of column another variable let us say row group 1 group 2 and I have group 1 group 2 group 3 like this okay so how do you calculate degree of freedom here uh, the first set here group 1 group 2 2 minus 1 number of column minus 1 into number of group minus 1 that is 3 minus 1 number of row minus 1 so it will be 1 into 2 that is 2 like this so degree of freedom is a very interesting concept it just tells me uh, about the uh, sample size uh, very specifically how many independent observations are there in our data uh, based on which I am calculating my parameters yeah that's for today bye from my channel
you in the next class.